What's going on everybody? I'm out here in Washington DC. We're doing a project for Boeing. They make planes and jets and things that go to space, all kinds of cool stuff. We do a ton of traveling with our shoots and we've learned a whole lot along the way. I always have nightmares of leaving the gear behind somewhere or the gear not coming out on the carousel, not being able to do the shoot. So here's a little video on how to travel with gear. Now there's three ways to transport your gear, right? You can carry it on the plane with you, which I try to do as much as possible, especially with the cameras and batteries and lenses. Second option is to check in. Sometimes you're just required to do that and third is to ship it, but then you have to coordinate where it's gonna go and it takes a little bit longer. But essentially, my go-to is to try to carry it on the plane as much as possible. Most flights, we're allowed to carry on one personal item like a backpack, and then we're allowed to have one carry-on item that you can stow in the overhead bin. So these are Pelican 1510s and these are awesome because they're hard cases and they're just the right size to fit on the overhead bins. Inside here is the camera and inside here are the lenses. This is my carry-on, this is Steve's carry-on. We both carry on backpacks with our laptops, hard drives, and little things like that. Welcome to Dallas Fort Worth Airport at 3 a.m. in the morning. We've had some bad weather, caused some delays in our flights, basically trapped here for like six hours. All our clothes has been checked in, so Steve smells like to be honest, traveling with gear can get a little bit exhausting. We've done a lot of flights, and each time we fly, we bring way too much equipment. Just in case. Yeah, well that's the problem with gear and travel is as soon as you say, oh, we don't need this, we don't need a map box, we don't need these filters, but that's that's exactly what you end up needing. First thing you might wanna know is media rate with airlines, but it's kind of iffy on how to get it. So you're gonna wanna skip the kiosks because you can't get the media rate through the kiosk. You wanna just go straight to the front desk area and talk to them, tell them that you're part of a media company. You're traveling for a shoot and that's why you have all these extra bags. Whatever airline you're flying with, go type in that airline name and then media rate and then just look through their policies. Right. And everyone's different, a lot of them give you like discounted rates on extra bags because we always travel with a ton of bags and also most of our bags are overweight. Usually there's a 50 pound limit before there's like a hundred dollar charge, but a lot of airlines waive that fee so you can actually take a big case and just stuff it. Today we saved like what, 250, 250 bucks, bucks yeah. because of media rate. And really a lot of times all you have to do is just say, this is my business card. And sometimes they'll say, oh, we need to see like credentials or whatever. And we always ask like, what do you mean specifically by credentials? And they say, well, some sort of official badge. Look, The thing is, they don't know what they're looking for either. We talked to some of those front desk people and they are all confused about it just as much as we were. Pretty much a business card alone with a company name on it and just anything that shows that it's media. Once they were giving us a pretty hard time about it, they were like, oh, you can't do it with just a business card. And then they brought out a printed copy of their mm. policy. And then we were like, it, it says, says right, right there. Here. So literally even the people that are working here don't know that much about the media, right? So the trick is to be confident in the fact that you are a media professional, that you are transporting media gear. Sometimes they actually even ask for your website. And if you have a website, that even works sometimes. The more ways you can prove that you are part of a production company or media company, then you're good. And one more thing that you can do is print yourself out your own company media passes. Uh, you can get them printed on hard plastic. I think they're about 12 to 15 bucks a piece. Or you can print them on paper, get them laminated and just have a clip and just have your picture, your company name and the words media pass on there. If it's laminated or hard plastic, they're gonna pick it up and be like, whoa, this is legit. And then you can put like a copy paste, a random barcode on there just so it looks even more authentic. And then, the, and then they won't even ask any questions. But generally speaking, the people at the front desk have literally said like, we don't know exactly what we're looking for. We just want something that looks official. Now, for those of you shooting on cine lenses or fully manual lenses, a good habit you wanna get into is to fully open up your aperture whenever you're gonna store your lens. The reason is because whenever you close down the aperture, those blades become exposed and they're more vulnerable to damage and shock. So lenses are usually in the safest position when those blades are tucked up behind the metal and wide open. And that's a good habit to get into all the time, but especially if you're gonna tug it all the way across the country. 
Okay, now we are in St. Louis. Sometimes when we're traveling with a ton of gear, we're trying to constantly figure out how to consolidate the gear into the least amount of cases or else it's just gonna be way too overwhelming. So sometimes what we'll do instead of packing an entire bag for clothes, we'll take the clothes and kind of just stick it in to our gear bag, especially the stuff that you're gonna get checked in. You have no idea how much that stuff is gonna be tossed around. So I always try to take all my soft clothing like shirts, sweaters, pants, and I try to kind of tuck it into every corner just to add a little bit of the extra cushion. But you don't really want to open up a case in front of all your clients and just have a bunch of socks and underwear laying around. So one of the first things I do after I check into my room is always head to the closet and grab a little plastic bag. One of these bags, there's always one in there. So now your clothes can kind of just double as extra padding when you're traveling. And I'll just throw all my clothes into this little bag. Oh yeah, I always get these. They always inspect the bag. When they see like camera gear, they're like, what the hell is this? If you don't have good equipment insurance, you should get some. Let's say your airline loses your gear, then your insurance should cover it. But what's not insured is the footage. Now you have to remember that not only are you using your time, but everybody's time. And you have to add all that up and you have to realize that you're spending a ton of money per day of shooting. So always, always download and back up your footage. If you can afford a DIT or a digital imaging technician to kind of download and check your footage along the way, that's great. But I get it a lot of times you don't have access to someone like that. And this is important. Don't just download on one drive, but make sure you make another copy onto a secondary drive. These are Western Digital Passport hard drives. They're not crazy expensive, and I at least have to have it on two of these, if not more. And some people like to download it from a memory card to a hard drive, and then from this hard drive, they'll copy it over to this hard drive. I don't recommend doing that. Always download from the card straight onto the hard drive, and then again from the card to a different hard drive. Because I've had times where the files went corrupt as you were transferring from the card to the hard drive. So the issue is if this file is corrupt on this hard drive and you back that up, you're just backing up a corrupt file. It doesn't do you any good. So two files downloaded directly from a memory card. It takes longer, but I cannot tell you how important this process is. I shot a project where the person did exactly that. They downloaded from the card, copied it onto a hard drive, and it went corrupt. It was an Alexa mini file, and like half the files from the day just wouldn't play. It went totally corrupt. You can't load it into Premiere or anything. It was a dead file. And they backed that file up onto another hard drive. They called me like a month later and they were like, please tell me you have a backup of this file because our files took a sh Boom, I got an extra copy. I keep all the files I shoot. So you can never have too many backups. Another thing when you're formatting a new hard drive, I always just unplug everything else from it just so that I don't accidentally format the wrong drive. Again, it's a pretty small risk, but every little thing like that I can do to just lower that risk just by a little bit, I'll do it because let's say you're downloading footage and you just had a couple beers or something, you could wreck your day. So now I got two solid copies of all my files. What I'm gonna do is take this one and get it out of my possession as fast as I can, just throw it at somebody and say, take it. But basically what I'm trying to do is just get rid of it so I'm not the only person responsible for the footage. You don't want them to be in the same car even if you can avoid it. They always inspect this thing and sometimes they jack it up. They yanked on one of these antennas, trying to tug it out because they didn't know how to remove the mimic system and they ripped one of the antennas out. So that kind of sucks. We're off to Florida for two days now and uh, one of the big things you want to always keep in mind is to always count the number of bags you have because you're gonna be tired and exhausted. You're gonna start losing track of stuff. So one of the first things we always do before taking off is just counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bags. So every time we get in a car or load out of a car or whatever, we count to 10. And at least check the essentials of stuff you can't get replaced. We like to generally spend the day before we take off and just set up everything. We build the camera, we set it up on the Movi. There's like some pieces that are very, very small and you might not even think about, but without that little piece, a whole piece of gear can become useless. Like for example, the Movi Pro, like if you forget the base plate for that, then all of a sudden you have this giant, awesome Movi Pro that you can't even put a camera on. Ugh. Oh my God, my body is broken. I just did one of those mud runs. It was like a Spartan race. And this is where you just like go and run through a whole bunch of mud so you could have this piece of metal. It was one of the shorter ones. It was only like four and a half miles or something. So I was like, I don't even have to 
prepare for that. Wrong move. I got cramps in every single muscle in my body and now I am just wrecked. I totally underestimated that, but at least I can feel slightly accomplished or whatever. And I also tested out the hyperlapse feature on the GoPro Hero 7. I just had it on a chest mount and uh, it turned out pretty cool. I actually like this effect. I don't know why. It's the concept of paying money to just put yourself through misery. It's, it's, it's such a weird concept. Kerry was saying it'd be kind of fun if we sign up for another one and we tell you guys which race we're doing so a bunch of you guys kind of like join in and do the mud run with us. I don't know. Would you guys be interested in joining up? Now before we wrap this up, let me just leave you off with one tip which is with batteries and lithium ion batteries. Now once you get your airline picked out, you definitely want to check with your airline what the lithium ion carry on policy is because all of them can be slightly different. But generally speaking, the current FAA regulations and again, this could get updated. All spare lithium ion batteries need to come onto the plane with you and you cannot check it in. So make sure you don't leave these spare batteries in your luggage or else you might get to your destination and be like, where's all my check luggage? And you have to call the airport and realize that they held all the luggage at the last place because there's all these lithium ion batteries. So remember to keep all the lithium ion batteries on you in your backpack or your carry on. Do not check it in. I'm not hundred percent sure why they want you to carry it on with you. I heard some people say that batteries can make sparks and sometimes start a little fire. And if it's in the cabin, the flight attendants can put it out opposed to if it's underneath. Now, generally all these lithium ion batteries have a label on the battery that tells you how many watt hours are in it. Under hundred watt hours is generally not an issue. And then if it's between hundred and 160 watt hours, then there's a limit to two per person. So we usually try to travel with four batteries within that range. So I carry two, Steve carries two. And a good example of that would be our red batteries, which are 153 watt hours. All right, time to read some comments. My last video was 10 Christmas gifts that filmmakers will love. Let's see what you guys had to say. Everyday Dad says, you had me at sweater. I know, this is seriously my favorite article of clothing right now. Can't even put it on, I'm so sore. My body literally doesn't want to move. Ouch. What do you think about DJI Osmo Pocket? Uh, I ordered one, so as soon as I get it, I'll let you guys know. That sweater is lit because it has LEDs attached to it. That is uh, very factual. Hunter says, time to sell my organs. <laughs> I'm already ahead of you. I've already sold all the organs I possibly can and still be alive. Did you just give yourself a haircut? <laughs> I did. <laughs> And my hair's been kind of jacked up ever since, but please don't look at it. Becky and Chris says, please send me that Alpache t-shirt for Christmas. Thanks in advance. If you guys don't know who Becky and Chris is, they have an awesome YouTube channel. And Chris actually gave me a spin around in his helicopter. So that was sick. This Boeing project has had us flying all over the place to film all kinds of cool stuff like the Alpache. We have footage of the Alpaches. We filmed F-15s, F-18s, like really, really cool stuff, but it's all classified. So I'm not really allowed to show it, at least until they release it. I was just over at NASA the Kennedy Space Center a few days ago. Once they start releasing some of the footage to the public, I can show you guys and it should be pretty cool. Anyways, I need to go lay back down and just be like a dead corpse for a little bit. I'll see you guys later, bye.